Accepting the bids for the West Side Park sidewalk project. Your motion to bring this to the board. Trustee Chair has made a motion. Second, second by Trustee Tribe. Uh, this is located PH Broughton, $33,908.05. Any further discussion or questions? Very Mr. Clerk. Trustee Tribe. Yes. Trustee Nice. Yes. Trustee Charo. Yes. 
Trustee Fletcher. Yes. Item three is an ordinance accepting the bid for the Plumber Boulevard resurfacing. A motion during this to the floor. Mr. Tries made a motion. Second by Trustee Fletcher. Uh, again, low bid PH Brockman Sons cost $559,988.44. Uh, rebuild of Illinois. Oh, rebuild. What was the budget? Uh, 741. 741. So we're well on the budget. <laughs> uh, three more. Does that mean we'll go further then? That's what we're doing. The, the next we're, we're assignment we're that Jim has is to work with IDOT, and, and if you need help, this is Teresa from Secretary Turner's office, we'll <laughs> be glad to help you get that approved quickly so that we can do it while we have that mobilized. Perfect. We can only approve what was bid, so I understand that. Okay. So we will look for extending that. When will this project begin? Uh, tomorrow, right as you're trying to get buses to school. <laughs> we'll start at 7 a.m. Uh, and why is this happening so late? <laughs> in the day or in the year? Wasn't it supposed to be done like over some? Yes. So we had to investigate bats underneath the bridge. There's new environmental requirements for IDOT. Uh, new clearances for IDOT, anything that uh, is sidewalk removal and replacement, that's an uh, environmental concern that there may be contaminated information or contaminated soils that have to be identified. So the process of environmental clearance for a simple mill and overlay has changed. So we went through a much more lengthy process of getting approvals to do the same work that we wanted to do earlier in the year, but here we are today. Fair. On the upside, this bid is probably about 20% lower than it would have been in the spring. Probably, because prices at the beginning of the year were much higher, and um, you know, we had uh, contractors, uh, say, during the pickleball paving, which was uh, by Truman Flat, uh, we had both Truman Flat, and we had um, uh, Broughton, both When's that coming out? When's it coming out? We need work for this fall. When's it coming out? So it worked out. I mean, not great for school, but um, you know, the majority of work is going to be on the other side of Route 4. But um, still um, able to use the RBI funds to move forward with the project. Any further discussion? Here you go, Mr. Trustee Nice. <coughs> Trustee Try. Yes. Trustee Fletcher. Yes. Trustee Charo. I move up for the resolution regarding Halloween in 2024. Any motion to bring this to the floor? I'll make the motion. Trustee Nice made a motion. Second. Second by Trustee Chai. Uh, we do this annually. We make a recommendation on the reading hour for our October 31st from 4 30 to 8. So that's what we will recommend to you. Further discussion? Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. The motion to bring the consent agenda. I'll make that. Trustee Fletcher made a motion, second by Trustee Charo. Any discussion regarding the warrants or the minutes? Hearing none, Mr. Clerk. Trustee Nice. Yes. Trustee Try. Yes. <coughs> Trustee Charo. Yes. Trustee Fletcher. Yes. Next village board meeting will be 6 p.m. on August 27th. No need for a closed session. Uh, are there any public comments on other village business? Hearing none, take a motion to adjourn the board meeting. Make that motion. Trustee Nice made a motion, second, second by Trustee Charo. All in favor? Aye. 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 You guys enjoy your committee. Yeah, not a problem. 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 Yeah, Trustee Gerger, Trustee Fletcher, here. All right. Any public comments on uh, agenda topics? Yeah. Hearing none, uh, I'll take a motion to bring the consent agenda to the floor. I'll make that motion. Okay. Motion made by Trustee Nice, and then a second, seconded by Trustee Fry. Any discussion on the consent agenda? Hearing none, <coughs> all in favor? Aye. Uh, new business. Uh, 
CMT engineering. Okay, a couple of items here since we last spoke. Um, first one, like we're talking about, Plumber Boulevard. Uh, we're going to award that to uh, PH Broughton. Um, in terms of the work, we're probably a month out from starting that. So okay. uh, we can coordinate with the school uh, in terms of when that paving operation is going to uh, uh, begin and just you know manage expectations okay. uh, moving forward. But <coughs> at that time, IDOT reviews it, uh, concurs with the award bid, uh, we'll probably look at it about a month out. Uh, and then once you get started, I know it's, it's a rough guess, block how many, how much time? I'm gonna say you're probably about two weeks. Okay. So it's about a two-year process. So uh, they'll come in, mill it, um, I don't know what their operation is going to be doing everything on the west side first and doing everything on the east side or if they're going to just mill everything and then come back but uh, it's a two inch mill and fill so you know if they want to mill everything it'll just be a rough surface for you know, a week and then they'll come back in and pay but uh, they're interested in moving forward with it as quickly as possible so as soon as we get some firm dates on that uh, you know we'll coordinate for you guys on that as well awesome. so uh, the other one, uh, Westside Park uh, sidewalk, uh, as you guys just voted on, it's um, completion of kind of a loop around the park that we started two years ago with some uh, park grant money. Uh, we took the park grant money as far as it would go. This completes it around one of the ball diamonds, comes back around on the dog park area, and ties back into the um, uh, parking lot there. So we had uh, 50000 appropriated to it, it came in at thirty three. so uh, we'll be able to finish off that project. Uh, pickleball. So, paving is done. The fencing, is, all the exterior fencing is done. The interior fencing posts are in. Uh, the fencing will be done once the court resurfacing is done. They have a, for the surfacing itself, it's a four part uh, application of the surface. Uh, they got the two base courses uh, down, uh, the second one went down today. Should be done by the end of the week in terms of the surfacing. Uh, after that, we have a bid opening next week on the 20th for the remainder of the sidewalk that encircles the, uh, the remainder of the court. Um, so you guys will see that in the board meeting on the 27th with an October 18th conclusion date on that. I'm assuming once the surface is done, that fence company will come right back and finish the two. Yes, no, that's the plan, but uh, they didn't want to be encumbered by the fence while yes, they're working on the inside. So the inside will not open it until the sidewalk. So because we do have sidewalk connections to the gate right now that's just open excavation open dirt so uh, also for ADA accessibility as well so to gain access to the court and have it fully ADA compliant we need all of the sidewalk and otherwise we don't meet those requirements so and I'm assuming you're just not going to put out the nets correct, uh, correct. <clears throat> that makes sense that's so be correct <laughs> otherwise I got to climb the I, that is exactly what Dustin told us. He's like, you know, we could chain those gates up or whatever. If we put the nets out there, they will be out there playing. They will climb the fence to play. So. I think he was talking about this. Oh, okay. Can you climb an eight foot fence? No. no okay. No, I've got tall ladders. <laughs> That's okay. Perfect. Uh, what else we got going on? Uh, sidewalk repairs just through the MFT maintenance along uh, East Mall Barrier uh, undergoing, so just uh, fixing um, areas that uh, have received uh, repair tickets um, you know, through the village's system on that, uh, making those improvements. Uh, Palmer Boulevard Viaduct, uh, first coat of paint is done, second coat is supposed to be going on on Wednesday evening, and that will complete that project. That looks really good. That looks nice. Yep. Uh, oil and chip program, uh, as we talked about before, that's something that uh, you know, the village put out to bid this year for the first time. Uh, for the past two and a half weeks, the village street crew has been uh, pre-patching in advance of the oil and chip, since you know, the oil and chip doesn't really fill in anything, it just coats what's out there. Um, so they've been filling in potholes, uh, repairing the uh, edge of pavements where it's been low or you know, falling apart or falling apart. And, uh, so they had there will be complete with that this week, and we're looking at next week uh, for PH Broughton to come in and do that work. I said it'll take a day. That's it. So they'll come in, oil it, rock it, and be done. Jim, where is that place at? 
This is various locations, <coughs> various locations throughout the village. Uh, the bulk of it's uh, on Glenwood and Body Brook. And then uh, we have an area in the park uh, where we rock the parking lots uh, about two years ago now. And we're going to uh, cover that area with oil and chip as well. So, um, update uh, Keystone, uh, also as part of the pickleball paving, Keystone was paved. Uh, as I said, experimental pavements, uh, kind of a learning process as we're going through here. So when they milled it, um, they actually the sub base was in decent shape, uh, which allowed us to pave. It was kind of a crapshoot there in terms of, you know, is it going to be so much weight or whatever, how's that going to work out? But, uh, the majority of the pavement ended up being in good condition. We do have two areas that the village is going to come back and patch with concrete. Uh, as a result of, we milled it and we paved the one lane and then as we're paving out the other lane, the asphalt trucks come in one lane that we paved. So we do have some base running that occurred in two areas down towards the cul-de-sac that we're gonna come in and patch. What that's done for us in terms of looking at the operations moving forward, what we're gonna do um, on the next subsequent project is we're gonna mill the project do a proof roll over that, determine what needs to be patched, we're going to pre-patch it, then have the uh, company uh, contractor come back and then pave it. So as opposed to build and pave it all in the same operation, so that will allow us to do a better evaluation of base and see what we're dealing with and then do those patching out operations. That's the roll test? That's the normal roll test? Or? It is a roll test, but we're doing it on the subgrade because these subgrades are so bad. Um, you know, even in areas that did hold up, uh, when the asphalt trucks were coming back through, we actually saw the pavement just like that uh, of the remaining sub base that was there. But in areas here, we paved it from a nominal two inches of the curb line to about five inches deep at the center line. Uh, went down on two lifts. So that additional pavement will take that load, but it's the construction loading that's causing us problems. So when you mill it, now you're taking bad pavement, you're reducing the thickness by half, and then putting loaded trucks on it. So we can't just float the material in there, it has to be delivered by trucks and with the paper and so forth. So if there are areas that are showing, um, you know, holes, distress, actually sinking, uh, we're gonna evaluate that after the milling, repair those with concrete patches, and then come in and, and surface it at the end. Uh, so this one, we just set it up as a all one operation. We're gonna mill it and we're gonna pave it the same day type deal. So, but we did have two areas that did not hold up to the construction loading of multiple trucks going down to the end, dumping in the paper and paving out. So it was kind of one of those processes, but uh, the project came in well under budget. Um, we got an excellent product at the end with the exception of those two spots and shows promise moving forward in terms of being able to hit more roads at a cheaper dollar The thing is, is right now we can't use MFT runs to be able to pay for that. They don't, they don't like that comparable system. We're trying to document it to show that it works and see if we can get them to change the line like that. Is that because of the experimental aspect of it? It's the condition of the pavement because they don't want you basically throwing away asphalt on top of crappy sub base and then also using the uh, fiber modified asphalt uh, that is not <coughs> IDOT system, so they will not allow that. Um, so, kind of two things working against us, but, uh, and rightfully so. I mean, they don't want us just throwing money after, you know, and we've run into that situation in the back in the past with, uh, you know, previous uh, engineers in the village. You know, it's like some of these areas were, oh, we'll just, you know, mill and overlay the bad spot. Well, the subgrade was so bad that we kept going back year after year after year, and it's like, you know, why are we patching the same area for the fifth time in seven years? Um, if you dig it out and do hold it, you're talking almost five times as much. Correct. So what we got for you know one hundred fifty thousand dollars probably would cost you know eight hundred thousand uh, to reconstruct that roadway. So but if we get this process down, we get it to work for subdivisions that have all the houses built, and the only thing that's going to go down that street is the occasional garbage truck. Fair repair that we can use. And that's what we're shooting for. I mean, this is not going to be a repair. 
healthcare option for you know the spruces, the golden rods, the plumbers, the farming bins, you know the heavier um, uh, traveled roadways. It's just you know these cul-de-sacs or you know um, you know horseshoe roads where all the roads, you know all the houses are built out, everything's developed, and you know with the exception of a moving truck or garbage truck or a school bus, that's the only traffic that you're seeing. So um, trying to make and, and we have a lot of these roadways that are just in horrible condition. So I'm you know, just trying to spread that money out a little bit further, do something that's a little bit more responsible, um, and kind of cheat the system a little bit in terms of you know how do we make this work without actually re properly yeah, repairing the roadway. It's how many years down the road, in your professional guess, will it be before you actually know that that's that new substance is going to do what you hope? So what I would say is probably in the next uh, two to three years, you know, we would start seeing, uh, my biggest concern is going to be, you know, immediately you'd see deflections in the pavement. Um, but two to three years down the road, if we start seeing, you know, freeze thaw uh, type deflections or cracks, and maybe cracks in the pavement, then it gives me more concern that there's too much moisture in the base, uh, you're getting too much freeze thaw, it's heating the pavement, um, you know, we're running into the same condition. So, um, you know, what we'll do is take some survey shots, take a look at it, see how it's performing, look at the cracks, um, and see where there's pavement separation or deflection, and, uh, you know, go from there. But, I mean, right now it looks like brand new pavement. That's John, awesome. if you look at it, if you look at it, yep. from, like, uh, Acacia down towards Ford, bad spots they're all low yeah because sub base is given out there yeah the asphalt is sunk down and then water ponds there and then every time somebody drives over it pumps the oil away from the rock and you've got a mess if you can get your roads ground and get the water away from them they shouldn't mess up on that same thing with our bike path our bike path kept deteriorating i was like we need to go out and cut the shoulders and get let the water get away from it. So the last few we've been cutting the shoulders and then getting it run away. So good job. We appreciate you guys. That's awesome. Hopefully it'll work and we'll get a lot more roads in. Yeah, then that's the goal. So we'll see how this one holds up. And like I said, we'll learn a few things on this one in terms of just construction operations um, and evaluation of the subgrade as we go through there. So we're gonna split up those operations and and see where we go. Um, probably the next bad road is probably Bristol um, over there in First Warren. Um, that one is just absolutely horrible. Um, so we'll take a look at that, uh, kind of see where you know, all the funding on all this stuff lands and look at doing something again next year and just kind of start a rotation and do the ones that we need to do and then do the worst of the worst and just kind of meet them in the middle. Right? So, and then uh, See, last one today finished up uh, presentations with uh, you know village uh, hall uh, investigations with the uh, architectural services. So in the last two, but uh, firms were um, Evan Lloyd, Farnsworth, uh, GMA, and Art Images, and uh, so as well as myself and the rest of the village staff make recommendations to the board moving forward for consideration. Awesome. So that's moving forward.
and deal with FOIA requests and stuff. All right. That sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. All right. here for the village election for 2025 elections so anybody that is interested filing period is now uh, if there is a primary which is for the 13 candidates running for trustee there would be an early a primary election if not then there is uh, you just need to walk signatures basically and in November you can file, you can file and anybody's got questions they can ask me I got packets here that anybody needs it I'll make that motion. Motion. Okay. 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 Okay.